Welcome back to Watch the Booker Man and to episode number 75 of Paul Heyman's TNA. And we are here at Destination X 2011, a pay per view that I've been really, really looking forward to booking. So let's get straight into it with the video package that opens the show. And it's largely focused on the X Division athletes and people who have previously held the X Division title. AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe are just a few of the former title holders to be featured with a number of incredible spots and moments from the division's history being played. There are so many to choose from that it'd be hard to just narrow down to a few minute video package, but that's what we do and fill in the video package. Marrow and Taz welcome viewers to the pay-per-view, which will open in the biggest way possible, the entrance of the World Heavyweight Champion. And once in the ring, Kurt Angle takes a microphone and recaps the open challenge he is about to face. The only conditions for this challenger was that they have to have been a former X Division Champion, but they can never have held the TNA World Heavyweight Championship before. Angle puts over the fact that he himself is also a former X Division Champion and he knows exactly what the incredible athletes from this division are capable of. He knows he's in for a fight tonight, but he cannot wait to take on that challenge. Despite not being used to stepping aside and handing the main event spotlight to somebody else, Angle is ready to set the standard tonight and to raise the bar for Ultimate X and for every other match on tonight's card. And he doesn't want to wait a second longer. Of course, we don't have to, as his challenger makes their entrance next. And if you look through people who have previously held the X Division Championship, but who aren't in the company, there was one name that stood out above all else for me. Not only that, I was really happy to bring him back onto this roster. Kurt Angle's opponent for the World Heavyweight Championship match is... Low Key. A huge name from TNA's history. He had a run with WWE, but actually they didn't even make an attempt to re-sign him when his contract came up at the end of December 2010. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, who knows. I just love the idea of these two men going at it. I think that Loki brings that physical style, the kicks and the strikes would really mesh well with Kurt Angle, who is more the throws and the suplexes. And I really do think you can let Loki, who isn't probably a World Heavyweight Championship contender in terms of his overness yet, you can let him have a lot of offense on Kurt Angle because it only makes your World Heavyweight Champion look even better that he can take all these moves and come out swinging. It's probably not surprising that Kurt Angle does pick up the victory. It takes him 17 minutes and 42 and it is an angle slam that allows him to pick up the win. But nonetheless, a great showing for Loki, an open match, all out, and I think they delivered, and 82 is really good. I'd be happy with that from the main event, so certainly no complaints there. A great way for Loki to come back, even if it is in defeat. Kurt Angle then stands tall following a competitive opening match, having his arm raised while holding the World Heavyweight Championship in the air. We can see that Loki has caused Angle a lot of issues, more than he probably expected. He's selling the effects of the match, but his message is simple, follow that. And it's not going to be easy to get a better match than that, but we are hopeful for that main event. And maybe for the Kings of Wrestling VW GTT, that's why this is such a great pay-per-view. We're opening with Angle and Loki, and the best, hopefully, is yet to come. We then go into a decent second match. It's only 12 and a half minutes, but it is Bay Money versus Brian Danielson and Desmond Wolf. The latter once again showing that they do have some chemistry together, even though they're not necessarily the best of friends. But the finish comes when, seemingly out of nowhere, the monster abyss comes down, drags Danielson off the apron while Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian are distracting the referee, throwing him into the guardrail, and then choke slamming him onto the ringside area. This leaves Desmond Wolf on his own, and Bay Money can pick up the victory with a DUI. Four decent ratings. Wolf and Brian not as good as they were on Thursday, which is a little bit disappointing, I suppose, but I'm happy with the 72, especially when it's not a clean finish. And obviously the question coming out of this is, why did Abyss attack Brian Danielson? Is it something to do with the forefathers? Is it just something that him and James Mitchell have decided? We'll, of course, find out on Thursday. But the focus after the match is on Bay Money and Kazarian and Daniels, who provided sort of a secondary assist for that match. All four members of the forefathers standing tall. The commentator is asking that question. Why did Abyss and James Mitchell come out? Why did they target Brian Danielson? Desmond Wolf left to fight alone. Both men were down as the forefathers leave up the ramp. 
We then get a video package prior to the third match and it's just looking at how the four men involved in this next match qualified to it. Kenny Omega, Jack Evans, Rocky Romero and Austin Aries all won four-way matches on the last four weeks of Impact, qualifying to Destination X and the chance for the winner to earn a TNA contract. As well as this, the competitor that secures themselves a deal with the company will also face the winner of tonight's Destination X main event at Lockdown and they will challenge whoever wins the Ultimate X for the X Division title at, for me, probably the third biggest pay-per-view in the TNA calendar, Bound for Glory, then Slammiversary for me personally, and then I would say Lockdown's third with maybe Genesis fourth. The point being, not only is this a chance to join the TNA roster full-time, it gives you a huge opportunity to make a massive impact on one of the biggest shows and for one of the biggest titles in the company. Hopefully I've hyped that up enough there as we go into the X Division contract match. And it goes 13 minutes and 20. It's an okay match. We see Austin Aries with a 63. Jack Evans with a 70. That's because I set this match to be a high spot probably. So definitely plays into his hands. Omega and Romero probably not best suited to that match type. But we wanted it to be that fast paced exciting match. And hopefully we got that. Albeit with only a decent match described by the game. But Austin Aries pins Jack Evans with a brain buster to secure himself a TNA contract after having his arm raised in the ring. Austin Aries is approached by SoCal Val. He had that chip on his shoulder about being a tryout on Thursday. Well, she wants to know how he feels now he's secured a TNA contract and an X Division Championship match at lockdown. Austin Aries says that he didn't think beyond this match tonight. He's been preparing all week, so he's got nothing to say to Val. However, this Thursday, he will be officially presented with his TNA contract by Paul Heyman. He promises that he has a lot to say and people are going to want to tune in to hear what comes out of his mouth. Austin Aries then refuses to answer further questions, heading up the ramp, hopefully setting up some more intrigue for this Thursday's episode of Impact. The fourth match of the night is Daisy Hayes and Sara Del Rey, Del Rey the Knockouts champion, and Mickey James and Tara, the Knockouts Tag Team Champions, going up against each other. And the gimmick basically is, if Sarah Del Rey is pinned by one of Mickey James and Tara, that woman will become the Knockouts Champion. However, if either of Daisy Hayes and Sarah Del Rey pin Mickey James or Tara, they will take the Knockouts Tag Team Championships and bring them home to the new age. We can see, as expected, Daisy Hayes the weak link in the match. Tara and Mickey James very evenly matched, Sarah Del Rey slightly better, and the booking of this match is probably a little bit strange. It's reflecting the fact that Daisy Hayes is the weak link, and we end up in a situation where Mickey James and Tara look certain to pick up the victory. Mickey James's idea is that they will then target Sarah Del Rey, and hopefully either one of them can become the knockouts champion, but Tara actually takes what you could maybe say is the easy route, the safer route, perhaps that's sensible, but Tara, when given the opportunity, pins Daisy Hayes with a widow's peak. They retain the titles, they're happy about that, but could they have gone further? Could they have rolled the dice, taken the risk, and left one of them with the Knockouts Championship? And typically, this is the first time that Tara's picked up the pinfall in a match with Mickey James and Tara. Usually, Mickey James is the one who gets the decisive fall, but tonight it happens to be Tara, and that does cause a little bit of tension. They raise the championships together, they stand as a united front, but we see that Mickey's just keeping a positive face on it, despite being a little bit unhappy with how the match went down she's speaking with tara off microphone so we don't really hear what they say but there's clearly some sort of disagreement tara makes it clear that the knockouts tag team championships are what should be most important to them well mickey said that she said being part of tara's final run was so important to her on thursday but she still feels this was a missed opportunity for one of them to take the knockouts championship from sarah del rey while things do remain civil there's clearly a disagreement about the approach that they took they head to the back together, and again, another developing story. We then go to the back with Jerry Lynn and AJ Styles being interviewed by Christy Hem ahead of Jerry Lynn's return to the six-sided ring. They will face Mr. Anderson and Matt Morgan. The two men speak about their history together as partners and as opponents. They were both part of the X Division from day one and they're both proud to see the Ultimate X main event this show. They've battled together as tag team champions, and they've faced off against each other as rivals for the X Division title. Tonight, however, 
their focus is on Mr. Anderson and Matt Morgan and putting them back in their place, two of the most arrogant guys in TNA, and as the interview looks to be coming to an end, Low Key walks in, he's banged up, he's not in the best of moods, but he does say it's been a while since he saw either of these guys, and they talk a little bit about teaming together in the first match in TNA history. Key wishes the two of them luck tonight and says that he's hoping that this match goes better than their debut when nine years ago against the Flying Elvises. So a little bit of a trip down memory lane between the three men who teamed together on the very first TNA show. In fact, in the very first match in the very first TNA show, but it is that match up next. And Jerry Lynn, unsurprisingly, is the man who is defeated. He was always going to be the weak link in the match, despite to putting in a performance while off his game at an equal level to Matt Morgan. Not really the best reflection on Morgan, but with AJ Styles with an 81 and Miss Dranson with a 73, it's still a very good match. The match quality has been really high on tonight's show. Great heat and good wrestling. A very clear face heel dynamic here with AJ and Jerry Lynn, the representatives of the X Division, but the heels win. Mr. Anderson maybe poking Jerry Lynn in the eye, maybe taking a little bit of a shortcut just to further put them over as heels, but in truth, after a mic drop, he would have beaten Jerry Lynn anyway, so they stand tall after the match, enjoying their win, and perhaps this means a little bit more, as the signature pay-per-view of the X Division, Mr. Anderson and Matt Morgan, two guys who clearly don't fit that mould, standing tall, and just being the arrogant assholes that they are, mocking their opponents as they leave to the back. We then get an interview with the New Age, the Kings of Wrestling and Tyler Black, and the leader of the group puts over how we are now entering the New Age's time of this show, and from here, it's going to be one-way traffic because they are going to dominate. First, the Kings of Wrestling will swap WGTT to the side, retain their World Tag Team Championships, and that straightforward job done. It will be then time for the main event. Tyler Black then speaks about the Ultimate X, playing down his belief that Kevin Steen or Joe can win the match, and he's pretty sure that he'll beat them to the X. As for the X Division Champion himself, Black makes it clear that he is superior to Roderick Strong on every single metric, in every single way that you can think of, and he's proved that in their two matches within the last few months. He says that the hardest working man in wrestling is going to lose to the most gifted athlete this industry has ever seen. A very confident promo from the new age. Can they back it up next in the World Tag Team Titles match? And despite Chris Hero having been pinned by Shelton Benjamin and Claudio Castagnoli having been pinned by Charlie Haas within the last few weeks, the simple answer to that question is yes. The Kings of Wrestling retain the titles in 19 minutes and 40. It seems straightforward and I don't really have much of a comment on the booking of this because when it's two teams this good, you just send them out to have a straight wrestling match. Superb as described by the game, Claudio Castagnoli pinning Charlie Haas, so a little bit of revenge from Thursday as well for him, as the Kings of Wrestling make the second defence of the World Tag Team titles, four good performances as we expected, Charlie Haas the weak link unfortunately, while Chris Hero stands out a little bit ahead of the others, but like I said at the start of the save, one thing that I wanted was to build the tag team division up so that they could feasibly main event the pay-per-view, actually before I added some more Joe to the Ultimate X, I was thinking of having the Kings of Wrestling v Wrestling's Greatest Tag Team main event Destination X, but then I kind of thought in terms of the pay-per-view, makes more sense for the Ultimate X, so I added Joe, but the point I'm making here is that this match could have main evented any show in TNA history and been more than sufficient in quality. Really happy with the rating there. Both teams with great chemistry of course helps, but simply put, these are four incredible competitors on the TNA roster and they wrestled in Ring of Honor, but that is a match I absolutely would have loved to have seen in TNA in 2011. The Kings of Wrestling retained the World Tag Team Championships in a convincing manner following a highly competitive match against wrestling's greatest tag team. While what is next for Hero and Castagnoli is unknown, the focus for the New Age is very clear. They must now turn attention to the Ultimate X and Tyler Black's opportunity to become the X Division Champion. Sarah Del Rey managed to keep hold of her Knockouts Championship, albeit in slightly fortuitous circumstances, you could say. The Kings of Wrestling still have the World Tag Team titles, 
but the New Age are hungry for more gold and we get final promotion for the Ultimate X and it features again a number of highlights specifically now from the signature match of the X Division Ultimate X. It's one of the most dangerous and exciting matches in pro wrestling so it's not hard to make a video package that's going to be exciting. We've seen so many great spots in the history of the match but we're writing the latest chapter tonight and perhaps the most important Ultimate X in the history of Ultimate X's Roderick Strong will defend his X Division Championship against Kevin Steen, Samoa Joe and Tyler Black. Three relatively fresh faces, Kevin Steen and Tyler Black certainly have only been here around 6 months, Strong coming towards 18 months now and Joe of course has been here for many many years but it is showing this new generation of the X Division a brilliant way to spotlight them and I can't wait to see how this match does. The Ultimate X for the X Division Championship. 75 so it's okay it does get the crowd buzzing it's described as a good match in game I, I, can't, I can't decide whether i'm a little bit disappointed with that or relieved that it wasn't worse you can see based on the individual performances 62 from strong 60 from steen 75 tyler black and samoa joe only joe really putting in a main and probably tyler black actually to be fair putting in main event level performances so maybe a little bit relieved actually that we did get a 75 upon reading that it comes down to Roderick Strong and Tyler Black in the end. I feel like they were the two favourites going into the match. Initially in my booking plans, to be fair, I did have Kevin Steen winning the title, but then I read up on the rules of the Ultimate X and the idea that I had wasn't something you could do. So Roderick Strong and Tyler Black are actually both on the X, the two most athletic guys in the match, so it kind of makes sense that it comes down to them. And they've both got their hands on the title, jostling for it, and it's basically that spot that... Which one of them has taken the title, we're not quite sure. But it is Roderick Strong who comes down with the belt. So, fingertips, inches, the smallest margins for Tyler Black. But he has once again failed on the biggest stage. He has now had three huge title matches in back-to-back -back months and has failed every time. Compare that to the Kings of Wrestling. Genesis, they become the tag team champions against all odds. They retain the tag team championships and tonight they put in an incredible performance and beat one of the best tag teams on the planet. Tyler Black, on the other hand, will be disappointed but will have to go and lick his wounds despite coming so, so close. Down on the canvas, with his X Division Championship grasped close to his chest, Roderick Strong is feeling the effects of the toughest challenge of his title reign to date. From the way he behaves after the match, we can tell that he knows that he came within seconds of losing that title and it was a coin toss as to whether he or Tyler Black left with the championship tonight. Retaining the title, like I said, the smallest of margins at play. He has defied the odds to keep hold of the X Division Championship. However close it was, you can't play down the fact that Roderick Strong has delivered in the main event of Destination X. They're putting over the work that he has put in to reach the top of the X Division. Nobody is more deserving. He's wrestled more than anybody since he came in the company. He's been wrestling multiple matches every single week and he has won the match tonight got his just desserts against three world-class competitors. Signing off on the pay-per-view, Mara and Alo and Taz talk about the incredible night of action from top to bottom. However, there is one last thing to happen on the show. Austin Aries walks out from the back, the newest member of the TNA roster. He has some history with Roderick Strong as well. He comes out, showered and suited up after his match, and simply stares down the X Division champion. Remember, when his contract is officially signed this Thursday on Impact, he will confirm his match against Roderick Strong at lockdown, and he will challenge for the X Division championship at that pay-per-view, a huge first match in his TNA career after earning his way onto the roster tonight. And a 76, I don't think that's very good for a pay-per-view, but it's a good show and it does increase our popularity. I'm not going to complain because it was a risk tonight. I always knew that. I could have just put Kurt Angle's open challenge in the main event. We would have got a show over an 80 and I would have been much happier. But I think in terms of the story, in terms of the emphasis that we chose to put on the Ultimate X tonight when we didn't have to, I'm happy overall. I'm not going to wish that I'd done things differently or anything like that. But I do have to make a speech. And because Samoa Joe, in a way, carried that main event, I will point him out as a good example. Kurt Angle, I'm pretty sure I always <laughs> tell the same people the same stuff here. But we're going to praise Kurt Angle for a great performance. And Chris Hero, I think they're probably the guys who've been praised for the last few pay-per-views. But it's fair, they're doing really, really well. 
very happy with that as are they and that is destination x in the bag like i said a bit of a different pay-per-view and hopefully it came off with that more of an emphasis on the x division but i said after the last show this can't just be a gimmick it can't just be once a year we focus on the x division this has to be the foundations of something that lasts for a very very long time we see the feedback has been great it's drawn a lot of praise and it's by no means a bad show happy overall and i cannot wait this is a huge month coming up locked down in 28 days time and really i cannot wait for what we've got planned this is something that I've been building to since Bound for Glory. Things turning up to the next gear here and hopefully everybody will want to join me for that. Thank you for watching Destination X 2011 and I'll see you on the next episode.